hari bersubuh. First at 9 this Sunday, the 11th of February, 2024. Platform for connections. India's unified payments interface to be introduced in Sri Lanka soon, says Foreign Minister. Platform expected to boost tourism in Sri Lanka. For oh, virtually sign that. Okay. So with that, it will be officially launched. Polluted. Sri Lanka's air quality drops to unhealthy levels. Vulnerable groups urged to wear masks. Growing strong, Sri Lanka records 11.4% increase in workers' remittances in January 2024 compared to a year earlier, reveals the Minister of Labour and Foreign Employment. Breaking records, tourist arrivals into Sri Lanka passes 52,000 in the first week of February, beating over 49,000 arrivals in January. Obey Vishwasi Dino Sinsudain, then Lagamati Pharmacy in Labadat Hacker. This is Ada Verna First at Nine. From Studio 24 in Colombo. Good evening and welcome to Adhidharana First at Nine. I'm Aditya Drisinga joining you live with the latest in Sri Lanka and around the world. Now in your top story tonight, Minister of Foreign Affairs Ali Sabri says that India's instant mobile payment system, dubbed the Unified Payments Interface, will be introduced in Sri Lanka and will be officially launched next week. Talking to Vion Media in Australia during his official tour with President Ranil Vikramasinghe, Minister Sabri said the signing of the application, rather the agreement, to launch the application is scheduled to be held virtually tomorrow under the patronage of the heads of state of both nations. The Unified Payments Interface is a system that powers multiple bank accounts into a single mobile application, merging several banking features, seamless fund routing and merchant payments under one hood. It also caters to peer-to-peer -peer collect requests, which can be used to schedule and make payments as per requirement and convenience. Each bank provides its own UPI app for Android, Windows and iOS mobile platforms. Governments of both India and Sri Lanka commenced plans last year on fintech sector connectivity by linking India's unified payments interface with Sri Lanka's payment platform, Lanka Pay. Last year, Prime Minister Modi and Sri Lankan President Ranil Vikramasinghe signed an agreement in India accepting the unified payments interface in Sri Lanka. The agreement was inked during Sri Lankan President Ranil Vikramasinghe's two-day visit to India. So far, the UAE, Bhutan and Nepal have already adopted the UPI payment system. How do you see the relationship between India and Sri Lanka going forward? Uh, I think Sri Lanka and India have had a great partnership in the recent past and it has really improved. And we are happy to see a lot of projects which have been in pipeline for a long period of time is ultimately realizing mm. a lot of interest on the part of the Indian companies to engage in Sri Lanka. Uh, not only government to government, but private sector as well as people to people contact has improved. We have seen usage of Indian rupee, anything on the anvil? Yes, I think on the next 12, we are UPI payment uh, gateway will be signed and I think both our leaders will uh, connect online. So hopefully with that, UPL will be a lab in Sri Lanka. So that will boost the tourism back in Sri Lanka again. I think we are now scheduled to have it on the 12th of this month for virtually sign that. Okay. So with that, it will be officially launched. Sri Establishment of IIT in Sri Lanka, if you can give details. Yeah, I think uh, IIT, the delegation from Sri Lanka went to IIT Madras and they are discussing this, a possibility of establishing IIT campus in, Kalam, uh, in Sri Lanka, probably in, in the hill country. So therefore, we see a lot of potential. And uh, I see there a lot of potential for education in Sri Lanka. One of your replies in New York that became very viral in India that was related to Canada. How do you see the Canadian government's uh, policy? We know that they still continue to make remarks on India, the relationship with Sri Lanka. I think it's important that people should know there is a two sides to any story before jump to conclusion and only please a segment of a society or a community is not that great. That's not diplomacy. So therefore, we would urge all parties 
parties to take a diverse opinion and and give a diplomacy a chance and don't be carried out with one-sided versions which had been uh, promoted by certain people with a hidden agenda and ulterior motives mm. because countries cannot mm. get isolated themselves mm. everyone needs everyone mm. so globalization means that people to people contact matters so people to people contact means all pe- people matters not a group of people matters so mm. that that's the message i have Now in other local news the interim secretariat for the truth and reconciliation mechanism recently held a stakeholder forum to discuss the proposed legislation for establishment of an independent commission for truth unity and reconciliation During the meeting the nations shared commitment to truth healing and reconciliation by offering a space for productive discussions and cooperation was showcased Meanwhile in a separate development president Ranil Wickremesinghe approved 1 million rupees for liver transplant surgeries for children and a maximum amount of 600000 rupees for cochlear transplant surgeries for children at the Sri Jayawardenepura General Hospital In a move to foster truth and reconciliation in the country a forum was recently organized by the interim secretariat for the truth and reconciliation mechanism to address several key issues the forum aimed to discuss various aspects of the draft bill for a commission for truth unity and reconciliation which will play a crucial role in addressing injustice caused to the people in the north and the east and promote reconciliation and non recurrence It was highlighted during the forum that the interim secretariat for truth and reconciliation mechanism assigned to lay the foundation until the commission for truth unity and reconciliation is established has been holding stakeholder consultations with victim organizations affected communities religious leaders and policy makers and has been diligently working on developing a report on a path forward based on truth mechanisms in other jurisdictions In addition the forum provided a platform for robust discussion on the various aspects of transitional justice including the need to adopt a victim centric approach ensuring that the voices of victims are heard the significance of implementing a comprehensive and transparent consultation procedure to acquire feedback from the diverse stakeholders in order to establish credibility and confidence in the transitional system was also discussed Overall the forum provided a platform for constructive dialogue and collaboration highlighting the collective commitment towards truth reconciliation and healing in the country Meanwhile in another development President Ranil Wickremesinghe has directed financial assistance from the President's Fund for liver transplant surgeries for young children at the Ragama Teaching Hospital and cochlear implant surgeries for children at the Sri Jayawardenepura General Hospital The President's decision aims to ease the financial burden on parents and support the welfare of children recognizing their importance for the nation's future According to the President's Media Division President Wickremesinghe has approved 1 million rupees for each liver transplant surgery meeting common conditions This financial support came into effect from the 1st of January this year. In addition, President Ranil Wickremesinghe has extended financial assistance with a maximum amount of 600,000 rupees for cochlear transplant surgeries for children conducted at the Sri Jayawardenepura General Hospital. Former ambassador to the World Trade Organization Dr. Dayaratna Silva says that Sri Lanka needs to transform its trade policy and give incentives for firms to move their assets globally than being restricted to local trade. Joining our current affairs program at Hyde Park within Devari Amuatta, Dr. Silva noted that corruption is deeply rooted in Sri Lanka and urged donor countries to adhere to international standards when dealing with Sri Lanka playing a role in minimizing corruption. Commenting on the inconsistent policies implemented in the country, Dr. Silva further highlighted that a 5 to 10 year trade policy direction is crucial to guarantee both local and foreign investments. We are looking at self-sufficiency in goods and services. How does this really help us achieve our targets in terms of integrating with the rest of the world? In making an attempt to come out of this crisis, the policy that we need right now is much different than in a usual situation. But having said that, we need to have a long-term view in our policy strategy we need to correct it right now thinking another 10 years down the line how we want for that we really need a policy shift major policy shift from local market focus to the global market focus with that we can integrate into the global market you know competitiveness is a very relative concept the competitiveness is the depend on how you can move your productive forces from lower productivity area to the higher productivity area higher productivity enhances your competitiveness this policy shift can take place only when firms are given incentive to move their resources without the local in focus but the global focus i understand there are certain sensitivities we are not averse to the import substitution if they are efficient import substitution short term you tend to lose but in the long term you 
win if you are adopting right trade liberalization policy. Talking about corruption and transparency in terms of trade, Sri Lanka ranks somewhere around 102 in the Corruption Perception Index. We hear from various quarters, the corruption is deeply rooted at all levels of this uh, country. There are OECD guidelines, European Union guidelines, in, especially in the procurement side. Donor countries should also play a role to address this deeply rooted corruption system very quickly. Inconsistent policies, unpredictable reforms or policy changes that Sri Lanka introduces. Uh, how is this viewed by foreign companies? Yes. We need to ensure two things if we are to attract foreign direct investment or promotion of any trade. One is the transparency of our policy. Other one is the consistency of the policy, which give more direction to the stability consistency. When these two are lacking globally, creation of trade and attraction of foreign direct investment, chances are very likely. So therefore more focus should be given. Give some clear direction for at least next five, ten years. Our trade policy regime is like this. We will not change. So if that give guarantee, not only the foreign direct investment, local investors will invest. Now in other local news, the Commission to investigate allegations of bribery or corruption filed legal action against seven people including five staff members of the Department of Motor Traffic for the unlawful registration of hundreds of vehicles. Accordingly, the Commission added that legal action was filed over the registration of approximately 400 vehicles that had not been cleared by the Sri Lanka Customs, thereby incurring a significant loss of revenue to the state. In a statement, the Commission to investigate allegations of bribery or corruption revealed that more information was gathered pertaining to 156 of the 400 vehicles, adding that several of them had been categorized as luxury vehicles. As per a court order would obtained by the Commission, seven of the 156 vehicles are to be handed over to the Sri Lanka Customs from their current owners. Sri Lanka's air quality has dropped to unhealthy levels this morning, according to a report released by the National Building Research Organization. However, as per the NBRO, the current situation is expected to subside by tomorrow. The organization further added that this condition has materialized as a result of dust particles entering Sri Lanka's airspace from neighboring countries carried by heavy winds. Sri Lanka's air quality has dropped once again with several areas of the country recording unhealthy levels of air pollution. Last year too, the country experienced similar conditions due to increased dust particles entering Sri Lanka's airspace from neighbouring countries carried by heavy winds. Similarly, the meteorological department noted that misty conditions were seen in certain parts of the island including in the western and Sabargamu provinces and in the Gaul and Matra districts this morning. According to a statement by the National Building Research Organization, the air quality index level for the past 24 hours ending at 8 a.m. this morning indicated a slightly unhealthy level in Jaffna, Waunia, Gaul, Putlam, Badulla, Mulutiu, Polonnaruwa, Anuradhapura and Monaragala. Against this backdrop, the prevailing quality of air is likely to affect vulnerable groups including minors, elders and individuals with respiratory diseases. Concurrently, the air quality of Colombo, Kurunagala, Kandy, Kegol and Ambilipitiya stood at moderate levels. However, speaking to other than English News, Director of the Environment Division at the National Building Research Organization, Sarat Premasiri, said that the ongoing situation will most likely subside by tomorrow. He further assured the general public to not fear the ongoing situation unduly. Further speaking in this regard, consultant paediatrician of the Lady Ridgeway Hospital, Dr. Deepal Pereira, urged all children and patients suffering from respiratory diseases to wear masks in light of the uptick in air pollution. Pasuge dina kipe di lama hati evadvi mak kapi dekka. Wajud dushne vela thiye nama nang etterama lama inge lama hati evadvi ne pulwang. Ita matarwa kessa neti ayat pawa kessa etiwe ne pulwang. Swasana roga etiwe ne pulwang. Husmagani me apa hasta etiwe ne pulwang. Vadi pura parisar dushan tatvya etiye nana. Visechem daruo ita matarwa kalas tisse swasana roga pawati na ayat hati ya. Edumati ya na ayat. Shay roga tiye na ayat wagi swasana roga tiye na ayat. Mukawarnya palni nana kondai. Now taking you to some political developments, leader of the Mahmoud Party, Dilip Jayavira, urged the youth of the nation to learn from the mistakes of the past and study how wrong decisions by certain political movements led to disastrous and fatal consequences. He made these comments while addressing a youth gathering in the Kadwila district. 
A public gathering with the youth in Kaduvela was held yesterday under the patronage of leader of the Maubima Janata Party, Dilit Jayavira. इतिहासे विशाल वरदीम की प्याक अपे बिलाती है ना ये अंतर तुरे हमें कुड़ा काले इसको ले आटे दी हम साहबा की उन्हा जनता यूं के पर मुने पांती पाठे ये पांती पाहे ती बुना इंडिया और व्याप्तवादे हतर विनी पांती मंगी ये पु इट बस इसको ले कुल है दित मम गया ये विलावित इंडिया और व्याप्तवादे ती बुना Kali peti kelawat tempat desh ke Mumbai lu nak kira kira hitap bu terbida tarun ek hisat terbedi tapa gata negara India we Mumbai lu nu kiri wakil lah. Ita amat teruk. Tusi tapai tiu ru kiri puteri kmi agiya India anu bihit prescribe kara kiri lah. Rata awasan awat semua ke sami pun teran kiri puteri kiri tiya nanti u na. Mama prasna kara ada panti baha. Un prasna kara ina. Un viswa sekara digi digi tema eka sabti agba. Mama viswa sekara na mama tadu jiwat nu teran he. E viswa sekara opo viswa sekara na e kriya dami yedu नो आया अद हैसे रहने विधि है खुद में उदाहरण यक में तारों ने टे यम किसी दिने एक ओबे अद वैरदी तीर ने गतोत ये कवदाहारी ओबट बाल पार विधि है है बे अदत ये पांती पाह विश्वास कर पु सी ये टुनक मिनिसुलंग कावी नो वो ये पास से गिये पु आया उक्कम में सिद्धु नो देश पाल न पैरली अत्यंक मैं अति उनु सांग काव ऐमन अत्यं मैं दुख ए गुड़क अति उनु मनोबावे अनिसागी बुए अपि उन डारा धना करना वो निन्न टोन मौवि मजनता पक्षेर मिसक विनाशकारी देशपाल न बाले बेगे टे व्याज देशपाल न बाले बेगे टे निमि विश्वासी तबार न पकेरी now another political news leader of the Sri Lanka Freedom Party, Maitri Palasi Rasena, has assured the party's support towards a proposal to abolish the executive presidency. Meanwhile, opposition leader Sajid Premadasa said he will take steps to remove the 18% value-added tax imposed on fertilizer and other agricultural imports. Now let's take a look at that and more news shared across the political stage today. Raji Adha Pohar Atulu Anikut Krushi Yedavum Malta Siyata Daha Ataka Vettaka Ghala Dino Api E Vettaka Anivarinma Iwak Karano Aikinika Mamme Vastave Prakash Karano Tapi Tapi pahedilu pemandi seperti pati api orang tak kewa. Api India ini amul sama agama tak kesakat cakera. Tapi amul sama agama tapi tapi pahedilu karu dekwa. Metera kisah tu prasampadan kerja vali aku elah neh. Tender party party aku neh. Adu maga India ini tulibat. Mereka tender party party aku kedua. Tapi orang kewa he meka neh. Sulam baling utpadan ikiran yang apa tu pelibadan orang kewa. Orang melati ikan ni. Eka kek dua ratus tu nama. Di Lanka ini anu. Pahugi dah asal. Sulam baling utpadan ini. E Yusuf masang keran katakan lati bune. Dua ratus tu hatah nama rakat. Metera luku ini. Tetapi kata mai, sedih mana berat. India orang bawa nak ni mi, Jepun ni, dah kuno Korea ni, macam mana China ni, mana ni mana sanjara kipya, hati kiri mana sedaya, raja wal, udah ukar no ana, ekik itu besar, ini dia tu benda kat mana, kalau mama itu ni, loka arti kipili benda, ha benda skam kipili benda, aku boleh. Pidah ini jangan tu jujur ya, ikut kiri mana sedaya. जानवर तो विचार रहे हैं पर दो अभी श्रीलंका ने जहाँ समाप्ति है एक का तक नहीं हुई आज देखा मां भी उससे नहीं किए नहीं कर मां पहले दिल्ली वाले किया नहीं रोक रहे राजपक्ष साला विक्रम सिंह वाला पार्टी नहीं था तमाई पलात पाल ने मेथी वर्ने खाल दागत तो ने एक खाल दागत तो जनादिवसी वर्या now in other local news, the Criminal Investigation Department is scheduled to take statements from the members of the Indian Credit Facility Coordinating Unit when the substandard vials of the human immunoglobulin vaccine were imported to the country. Meanwhile, the Criminal Investigation Department has also obtained signature samples from the supplier who provided the relevant doses of the vaccine yesterday. With that, let's take a look at some news in brief. Yesterday, the Criminal Investigation Department took measures to obtain signature samples from Sudha Janaka Fernando, the owner of the company which supplied doses of the human immunoglobulin vaccine. Sudha Janaka Fernando is currently in remand custody as legal proceedings surrounding the matter are currently underway at the Malika Kanda Magistrates Court. It is also reported that the Criminal Investigation Department will record statements tomorrow from the members of the Indian Credit Facility Coordinating Unit in Sri Lanka during the period in question. The matter is scheduled to be called up again before the Malika Kanda Magistrate on the 15th of February. Meanwhile, a corpse of a woman was found yesterday in a well in the Pudukuri area in Mulativ. Residents say the concerned woman, aged 29 years, gave birth to her first child a few days ago and was worried that she did not have enough breast milk to feed her newborn baby. Meanwhile, a 12-year-old child residing in the Magas Katuman area in Nuralia has suffocated to death. When the unfortunate incident transpired, the child was reportedly playing with a cloth tied to a tree. Subsequently, the cloth accidentally entangled around the child's neck, suffocating him to death.
Welcome back now in your business news. Following the recent trend of the rise in Sri Lanka's tourism industry, a total of 60,122 tourists have visited the country during the first eight days of the month of February. According to the stats and figures published by the Sri Lanka Tourism Development Authority, with this increase, the total number of tourist arrivals reported so far during the year has topped 200,000. Further, 7,761 tourists arrived in Sri Lanka on the 8th of February alone. Sri Lanka has welcomed a total of 268,375 tourists so far during the year, with 60,122 tourists arriving in the country during the first eight days of February. Accordingly, the first week of February saw a total of 52,361 tourists, which depicts an increase from the highest number of weekly arrivals reported during January this year, amounting to 49,341 arrivals. Further, 7,761 tourists arrived in Sri Lanka on the 8th of February. According to the statistics of the Sri Lanka Tourism Development Authority, 15% of the tourist arrivals during the first week of February were from Russia. According to the statistics of the Sri Lanka Tourism Development Authority, 15% of the tourist arrivals during the first week of February were from Russia, amounting to a total of 8,755. Coming in second was India, claiming 14% of all tourist arrivals in Sri Lanka. Significant numbers of tourist arrivals were also seen from the UK, Germany, China, France, Poland, Australia, the US and the Czech Republic. Sri Lanka last year recorded a staggering 1,487,303 tourist arrivals, showing immense improvement from 2022, where the total number of tourist arrivals tallied at 719,978. Now in other positive local economic news, Sri Lanka recorded an 11.4% increase in workers' remittances in January 2024 compared to a year earlier. According to the Minister of Labour and Foreign Employment, Manushana Nayakara, Sri Lanka earned a total of 487.5 million US dollars in foreign remittances in January this year. According to the Central Bank of Sri Lanka, cumulatively, Sri Lanka earned a total of 5.97 billion US dollars last year in workers' remittances. Now in your corporate developments, Gamer.lk partnered with Tencent Games recently to deliver a documentary experience dubbed Level 100 in celebration of the one-year anniversary of PUBG Mobile's game mode, World of Wonder. Meanwhile, Navaloka Hospital's PLC announced the resignation of a non-executive director of the company recently. With that, here's a look at more corporate news in brief. Gamer.lk, the global brand of trailblazing games and esports organization in Sri Lanka, collaborated with Tencent Games recently to deliver a documentary experience dubbed Level 100 in celebration of the one year anniversary of PUBG Mobile's game mode, World of Wonder. The documentary, which explores the creative subculture within the world of wonder, takes viewers on a journey across Nepal, Pakistan, and Sri Lanka. Additionally, this collaboration marks the second time PUBG Mobile has entrusted in game esports, Gamer.lk's global brand, with the creation of a documentary. Meanwhile, Navaloka Hospital's PLC announced the resignation of a director recently. Accordingly, Professor Arjuna De Silva, who served as a non-executive director of the company, resigned from the board of directors with effect from the 8th of February this year. In its corporate disclosure, the company stated that the retired director did not hold any shares in the company as of his date of resignation. Meanwhile, Exterminators PLC recently announced the appointment of a chairperson to the company. Dr. Kishu Gomez was appointed as the non-executive independent director and chairman of the company with effect from the 8th of February 2024. The company further stated that Dr. Kishu Gomez is not a shareholder of the company. Now, in your sports news, Sri Lanka won the second one day international match with Afghanistan a few minutes ago. After winning the toss, Sri Lanka was elected to bat first and scored 308 runs after losing six wickets. Afghanistan, who chased the score of 309 runs, rather, was only able to score 153 runs by the end of the fifth ball. That's it for tonight. Have a great night.